Good morning. Today I would like to expand on my thoughts from my morning radio word of encouragement on WJJQ. Some of you might even remember these thoughts I'm going to share with you over the next few days from previous messages that I have given. These thoughts come from God's six-point strategy for mental peace found for us in Philippians chapter 4. But first of all, why, why am I repeating these words? A recent report say that prescriptions for mental health medicine have doubled during this time of quarantine. It is also still true that three out of the top four selling drugs are for mental illness. Amazing. The thing is that every trial brings with it Satan's renewed attempt to unsettle our hearts. Brothers and sisters, there can be one trial in our life that doesn't affect us while another trial will. For example, I have known people who have, were devastated when they lost their job. Well, another person wasn't. Yet that same person devastated by job loss was not necessarily devastated by this quarantine while another person who was not devastated by their job loss was devastated by this quarantine. Each trial affects us differently. Therefore, we need to go back to God and have God repeat his words of encouragement for us. Our God has given us an excellent prescription for any trial in Philippians 4. He says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. In these four verses, we have God's six-point strategy for mental peace. Number one, rejoice in the Lord. Number two, be gracious to the others. Three, remind yourself of the Lord's nearness. Four, cast out worry. Five, pray with thanksgiving. And then six, to focus your mind on what is excellent. There's so much packed into these words that we can't do justice to them in just a few moments. So I would like to spend some time this week looking at these words. First of all, the word encourages us to rejoice in the Lord. Again, I know this is very repetitive, but it bears repeating. Joy is not the same as the emotion of happiness. Joy is not an emotion. Happiness is an emotion. It goes up and down and is often affected by the situations of life around us. Joy is an attitude. An attitude that finds its foundation in God's love through Jesus. Joy is an attitude, an attitude that finds um, that God is still working out a good plan even when I don't see it. Notice the word tells us to rejoice in the Lord. In the Greek language, the little preposition in would bring a to the would bring a picture to the mind of the Greek reader. When the Greek reader would hear that little word in, he would immediately think to himself, oh, that little word in pictures me in the middle of the sphere, not just the circle, but in the sphere of Jesus. He is all around us. We are in the middle of Jesus. He is all around us. I am reminded of a beautiful passage that I haven't thought about for a while. In Psalm 125, we read, As Jerusalem is surrounded by mountains, so the Lord surrounds his people from all from now to eternity. The city of Jerusalem was ringed by a series of mountains. Back in the day, Jerusalem was a naturally fortified city. It was hard for an army to attack it. God is described as the ring of mountains surrounding us. Oh yes, the troubles will come. The armies of sin and the and struggle and Satan will try to attack us, but the Lord surrounds us. He defends us. He fights for us. What's attacking you? What is, what is worrying you? What what has your heart racing? What wearies your soul? Look up and rejoice in the Lord. Even when the struggles weigh down, we have the attitude of joy. 
the attitude that God is protecting, defending, and working out a plan for us. Need peace? Rejoice in the Lord. Brothers and sisters, we're going to talk more about this over the days to come. But now, let's get back to our reading from the book of Acts. Uh, we're coming to the end, and I pray that it has been a great journey for you, uh, reading through this book and seeing how the early church continued to proclaim the gospel, to be witnesses, even in the struggles of life. God's blessings on your reading, and God willing, we'll see you tomorrow.